Welcome to this video. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer and I want to address a couple of questions that I've received recently through comments and then over the years a lot of people have said very similar things and that is okay so I, I get that if I bring let's say a FDCPA Fair Debt Collection Practices Act case against an abusive debt collector I can get $1,000 max and my lawyer will get paid but why should I go through all that sort of headache for just a thousand dollars and look it's a legitimate question the problem with the question is it's built on a wrong foundation and that is a consumer can only get a thousand dollars that's simply not true here's where that comes from there is something in the FDCPA that says you can receive statutory damages and these are damages where you do not have to prove that you've been harmed so you don't have to be compensated. You have no actual loss. You just say the debt collector broke the law and I get up to $1,000. And so there's been this sort of myth that grows up around that, that this is all people are entitled to. Now, frankly, consumer lawyers have contributed to this myth as well because they will tell their clients, look, all you can get is $1,000. So everything else in the settlement, I get, because you're only entitled to $1,000. I'm just telling you, that's not correct, unless the lawsuit is literally only asking for statutory damages. And maybe there are occasions where that's appropriate. But I can tell you, every case that we file under the FDCPA, we're asking for statutory damages, so up to 1,000, and full actual or stated differently compensatory damages so actual means what is what's your actual loss compensatory is this is where you were before the debt collector broke the law right after the debt collector broke the law that knocked you down to here okay we'll talk about that in a second well to compensate you is whatever that amount of money is to bring you back to where you were before that collector put that false item on your credit report filed the bogus lawsuit lied to you, called your ex-mother-in-law, called your bot, whatever it is, okay? It's to bring you back, it's to compensate you. Two major forms of compensation. Number one, emotional distress. And for most states, most courts allow you to recover emotional distress for FDCPA types of cases. Now, they vary a little bit on how do you prove it. Well, that's getting into the details. You have to know what does your particular court require some courts are fine with the plaintiff, the consumer, offering their own testimony. Others say, well, the consumer can offer testimony, but you need somebody else that observed it. Or you need specific uh, instances or examples of how this bothered you. But that's just kind of the, the devil's in the details there. And that can be figured out. But the point is, the emotional distress. So when that debt collector does call your ex-mother-in-law or your current mother-in-law or your brother or your mom or your dad or your adult children or your neighbor or your co-workers or your boss, that's upsetting. It's very upsetting. And that makes us, you know, feel embarrassed. It makes us angry. It makes us scared. That's exactly why they do it, by the way. Okay. The debt collector that just calls you and calls you and calls you. Okay. The debt collector that sends you a letter that lies in that letter. The debt collector that threatens to sue you when they know it's too late to sue you. Threatens to credit report when they know it's too late to credit report. The debt collector that does sue you and they won't prove that they own the debt. Obviously, that's upsetting. Well, is that worth $500 or $5,000 or $50,000 or $150,000? Well, it depends. Okay. Now, that's the first type of economic, or not economic, but first type of compensatory or actual damage is that emotional stress. The other is economic loss, financial loss. So I have a, uh, a house that I'm about to buy, and this collector puts this bogus item on my credit board. Instead of my interest rate being here, now my interest rate is up here. Well, that's going to cost me over a 30-year mortgage. Maybe I have to pay more in a down payment or more closing costs or whatever it is. Maybe I've got some collector that keeps calling my work 
And finally, they're like, look, John, this is too disturbing. We can't have these people calling you. We're going to have to let you go. Well, now I've lost my income. Okay. What about paying a higher interest rate on a car loan or a personal loan? Or maybe I'm coming up for a background check, maybe a security clearance, and I don't pass it because of the, so I don't get the job, I've lost my income, or I lose my job, I've lost that income, or maybe my income was here, I would have received this raise, this new position, new responsibility, but because of this false item on my credit report, I don't get it. Well, that's my economic loss. So we have emotional loss, we have economic loss. Now, just to kind of give you some ideas, what would be sort of a small FDCPA case? Well, it might be something where you dispute the debt, they update your credit report and do not mark it as disputed. That's what's called a Section 1692E8 violation, failure to mark as disputed. Well, maybe they're paying three, four, five, six thousand dollars if they come in right away and settle it. Maybe they're killing the debt, certainly taking it off my report, at least all the dozens of these that I've done. That's just non-negotiable. Like you have to take it off my credit report and then you have to pay, whether that's three, four, five, six thousand dollars, whatever it is. Okay. And you know, it might be a little lower money, but they're killing the debt. They're like getting rid of the debt. And that's if they come in right away. They're not fighting us and Okay, we'll settle it. So that is a small case. Well, again, let's just imagine it's five thousand dollars. Well, the client's not getting a thousand, and I'm taking four. Okay, again, a lot of consumer lawyers do that. I think that's not appropriate to do. And again, that's where this myth comes up of, well, all you can get is a thousand dollars. No, that's not true, because you have emotional distress. You may have economic loss. Now, if you really had significant economic loss, it would be much higher, okay? Now, most FDCPA cases are going to settle somewhere between 10000 and 99000 But there are a lot of FDCPA cases that settle for six figures. We certainly have those routinely. And so they, they can have tremendous value, okay? Or they can be smaller, but either way, I never file a case saying, well, my client's going to get $1,000. I just, I don't see the point of that. I want my client to get more than $1,000, okay? So why should a consumer do this? Well, first of all, even if all you get is 1000 hey, it's 1000 okay? Now you'd have to decide if it's worth the time. But if we're settling a case for $5,000 or $8,000 or $15,000, our client's not going to spend much time. I mean, if they're spending more time, then the amount's going way up, okay? So if you have a violation by a debt collector and they truly violate the FDCPA and that has affected you and harmed you, then I would definitely look at pursuing that and getting all the compensation that you're entitled to. So hope that that's helpful and maybe does a little bit to clear up this confusion about why do consumers and frankly consumer lawyers think that the client only gets $1,000? Well, it's just not right and that needs to be changed. And when we change our thinking about that, then we understand why more consumers are willing to bring these cases against these debt collectors. And look, all the money that they pay, that's what changes the mind of these abusive debt collectors. I think I had a video a couple of days ago on this. You know, why they violate the law when they could get sued? Well, because they don't really get sued. The more we sue them, the more we make them pay money, the better off. And I'll tell you this, every single FDCPA case we have, I can't think of an exception. I'll get the call from the lawyer. It might be the in-house lawyer, it might be sort of their national lawyer in Chicago or New Orleans or wherever it is. And, and you know, the, there could be an Alabama lawyer. And kind of the common theme is, okay, John, you know, I know you say we violate the law, you know, and, and your client may be entitled up to $1,000, you know, tell us how much you have in fees and, and we'll see what we can do. And I'm like, no, I didn't bring this for $1,000 for my client. And, and not all, but almost all, react to that going, well, well, what do you mean? That's all you can get, $1,000. Like, no jury would ever give your client any damages, John. And I go, that's funny. How many jury trials have you had on the FDCPA? 
Well, um, um, I once went to a seminar and that's what they told me. Oh, okay, that's impressive, okay? So, you know, I'll take our jury trial experience on these types of cases and I feel very comfortable compared to Mr. Defense Lawyer who goes, I sat in a seminar and somebody who had also never tried a case had learned something from a seminar. And so it's like the blind leading the blind, okay? You, you take your view, I'll take my view. So again, I'll, I'll now step off my soapbox, but I just want you to know, it's a myth that you can only get $1,000. Now, could there be a case where you truly have not been harmed? and all you're entitled to are statutory damage? Yeah, I, I guess so. I haven't seen one, but I guess that's possible. But it certainly is the exception, not the rule. And it's frustrating to me when, uh, you know, consumer advocates, even consumer lawyers kind of make it like, no, the rule is you only get a thousand. No, 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 no. That's like the tiny exception. The rule is you should get compensated for what's happened. And you may have some state law claims that allow punitive damages or other damages. So anyway, I'll bring this to a close. I appreciate you watching this and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.